Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it's Tuesday, March the 26th, and really I would classify this as a trading range day, and really the range has moved up here a little bit higher. Uh, we may go higher from there yet, but for most of the day, I would call that the range there. These were the where you got the most touches on the lows and the closes, and this is where you got the most on the upper side, especially later as the more, you know, as the later power of the morning, we just couldn't get above this 1554, 75, 1555 area. Uh, so I would classify this as a trading range, but guess what? We've been trending up since just before seven o'clock this morning. So you can't ignore this trend here. Uh, we finally got the trend line break and you might've considered this this doesn't really look close enough for a break to me, but you could consider that a break and a move to a new high. But I believe this is what I would classify, and you could actually move that down to there. Then you really don't have any closes, so I think that's probably more realistic. Uh, then you got one leg up, and it took a while. Now you've really kind of made another leg up to a new high. And, you know, the precedence is always – the trend always takes precedence, so we were, we had a bias to the upside until we started trending down and we never could really trend down. It looked like we were going to try to have a trend reversal here, but you got to remember that's the first real break of the trend line. And there's a good chance we're going back to the high side and you got a nice reversal bar here. So you can't ignore it. Um, and now I think this, again, I believe that's was most of the range. And I, if you probably measured the early part of the morning range, which is basically that right there, and you put that up here, look what you get. Um, you basically get that right there. And so that should have been your kind of target right in here. And uh, and that's really, I like that right there, just getting that measurement, and you can see that kind of fits. So um, I even, I believe that's probably the right side on the other side. So, um but that's how you normally find that. There's no doubt that was a trading range overnight right in there. Uh, but we broke out of it, and we, we actually broke out the low side first. Um, the only way to get a bias prior to this was to look at yesterday's data, so and you can't ignore that. Uh, I get a lot of questions about that. The trend lines and most of the information I'm interested in is from right here forward. I don't care much about this over here unless – like we're doing now, we're making new highs. If we're making new highs up here, then, yeah, I'm looking across here to find previous resistance, and you see it right in here. Um, so if we're making new lows, anything below that right there, then I have to look into the previous day's price action or previous days of price action to find what I'm looking, to find the next support of resistance. But uh, there's – and – in this case, there was no bias really for this without looking into the previous day. So in that case, then I'm looking at this little trend up. We trended up into this. And notice we broke out the top, failed, broke out the low side and failed. But what won out? The bias. And that's generally what will happen. And so the bias was up when we went into this. And we broke out the low side twice. But guess where we ended up going out? Uh, will we keep trending? I don't know. But the bias is to the upside. And that's why most everything you see in here today was a buy, except for this one short trap right here coming off the high side of a, a range. And really, at that point, I had this right there. You can see that. And it was really tempting to go short right there, but it's almost, with the bias being down, it's almost always better to wait on second entry. And this is a failed second entry long that turned into a, a trap, a short trap, and easy. And you can see that we got a new high. So your first entry was the break above that bar, then it kind of pulls back again, and then there's your second entry, fails and traps everybody and turns down, and it rockets right down to the low side, tests it, and it takes off again. Um, the only reason we didn't have a long setup here is there really wasn't a good setup, and even this one was a little iffy, but there's a failed second entry short, uh, the tra you know, and that gives you enough reason to go long out of there to go to the other side, and there it goes off there. So... Uh, hopefully that makes sense to you, but this I would classify this as a range day uh, with an upward bias. And I don't see how you could classify it much of anything else, because really from 
um, I would say we got into this range, I would say starting right here. Um, uh, so from 8.30 this morning, right at the open until basically two o'clock today, we've been in this 52, about a three and a half point range, three to three and a half point range. And so, you know, that's really, that's a range day. Um with an upward bias. So that's how I would classify the day. But let's go back and start about the trades, talk about the trades. Uh, there was also a long right here, but I just didn't like it with this being a new high coming out of this range and, uh, and it not taking off and all that overlap. Uh, if you went to a smaller chart, you would probably see a second entry long here. But I still just didn't like it, and you see it wasn't long. It didn't. It, it would have worked, but it didn't go far before it corrected, and you get a better chance to enter here uh, off the trend line. And let me show you how I found. I knew I had this trend line um, by 8:30 this morning, and notice it didn't touch it till 9 o'clock. So I had this trend line 30 minutes in, in place, 30 minutes before price has ever touched it. And let me show you how I did that. Notice how you keep getting these highs here. And so I just drew a line off those highs right there. And then I make a copy of it. And I drag it down. For some reason that didn't match up. But I promise you that's how I did it. Let's just start over. I drew it right across there. Let's copy it. Drag it down. And you can see that right there. And um, but not only did you have that that the trend line right there, you also had one, two, three, four previous. You got kind of a double bottom there with a little trap. Uh, notice all those batching lows. And so that was a great place. Uh, you really, I really didn't like this bar so much, but it had a lot of stem. So, but when this one closed kind of bullish and you can see a lot of traders didn't really like it because notice how it didn't really take off yet um, but going long right there was a good trade um, there was actually a failed second entry long here that was really tempting to go short so if you saw that uh, let's just go ahead and mark that really I hate to even mark it because well you could because you might have called that the trend and there's still enough room to get out right there. I don't know. I I didn't take this short. It was really tempting. There's first entry, failed second entry, and then a second entry long that fails. And so you could have gone short right there. It's really risky because the trend is up, the or the bias is up. And right at this point, it's looking like a trend, not a trading range day. And there's been no break of any trend line. Um, so it's really risky, but if you saw that, it worked, uh, but I didn't like it. But let's go back to this trade. Again, uh, your entry is either one, here's your real signal bar, but it's not a very good signal bar because there's too much red there. So wait on the next bar. It closes with a bullish tint, so it's okay to go long or one tick above it. But notice how it took a few minutes to work off and, and to take off. But as long as your stop was down here where it's supposed to be, uh, if you got shook out right there, you could have entered again right here anyway. So you still could have got out with a tick or two and then re-entered. Um, but this is a second entry long counting off the lows. Because here's your first leg. There's your first entry. Pull back second entry. And really, we're just looking for two legs. There's your first leg. Pull back. Then your second leg. Um, and that's all that we're looking for. Once you get one leg up and pull back, you're probably going to get another leg up. And so that's a second entry because it's, the second entry just means second leg. If, you, if you're having a hard time with second entries, think about it like that because that's all we're doing. We're looking for one leg, a correction, then a second leg. But so many people have pr trouble with second entries, and they're really just real simple once you figure them out. There's nothing special about them. We're just looking for two legs. The market moves in twos. And we're always looking for two legs in one way and direction and two legs in the next. So um, anyway, that was a second entry long, made a new high, and then we turned down. So now there's really starting to look like something to this resistance up here. You got to uh, pay attention. I didn't like the short. 
uh, because the bias is still up. Uh, there's too much overlap right there, so that's a little risky. It would have worked, but I don't like those shorts, and I just think you're, you know, they'll work just enough to keep you trying them, but in the end, you'll lose more times than you'll win, and you'll be a losing trader in the end. So just stay away from them. Stay with the bias. So then you get a, uh, a little double bottom here, pull back, and notice there was a first entry long right there. Then we pulled back again, then a second entry long right there. And uh, off we go to the races and make another new high. And it instantly sells off. And this time we get two legs back. So look at this. One leg back, first entry, trapped everybody. Second leg down and everybody's thinking short and boom, it reverses. Second entry long. And look at that bullish reversal bar right there. That thing takes off easy scalp, and, um, you know, if you entered one tick above that bar, your runners, they came back and got them, like almost always on a range day. Um, but if you if you dropped your limit order back in here a tick or two, then you could have ridden this all the way back up here. But I would have exited in here, uh, especially when we made this second little double top that's kind of three pushes up. And you see we ended up getting a failed uh, a little trap there and selling back off and retesting this area and coming back and getting the break-even stops like they almost always do. And um, and then it takes off again back to the upside. And so this was a great place just above this doji to enter. It's a retest of the former low, and it holds this time. And again, it took it a little while to take off. And there was a second entry here, but this all occurred kind of within one bar. And so, um, and it, it, I just really didn't like it. And I actually exited this trade. I took this trade and I exited, I think, uh, on this bar. When it closed one tick lower, I instantly exited. Uh, I needed it to come to here to get out and guess where it went. One tick through that, just enough to get you, you know, that extra little bit you need uh, to get out, and then it turns down. And But I let them shake me out of it. I exited um, and didn't, I didn't get a full, um, I think I was going for two points on this, and I didn't get a full two points on it. I missed it by a tick. Um, so I exited. Uh, but then we had another failed second entry long here, and I was tempted to add back on here, but by this time you should have seen all this resistance across here. And you don't want to be entering up here with all that resistance, even with a long bias. you got to get in down here uh, or on a second entry. And notice what happened here. There's there's your first entry. you got a new high, count zero. You pull back. There's your first attempt to go higher. Turns down again, and it heads back up. It breaks above the next ball right there. Second entry long, and it goes nowhere. Absolutely nowhere. And um, it turns back down. And so now you got a trap, and look how easy you get out on another little easy scalp. No runners. Smart thing to do is exit right here, and you see it went a couple of ticks lower. But on a range of day, that's probably the best bet. And then look for a new entry. And guess what? It bounces uh, again. I didn't like the long here. I don't. It's a, it's just not a good setup. I don't like that bar. And by the time this one completed, it's way up here. So the only way to enter is to try to drop your limit order back down here, and it, it wouldn't have got filled. Uh, and then you get a second entry long right there. Notice this. It's a short trap. First entry short, pull back, second entry short. So it's a failed second entry short that breaks above. It's a trap. And guess what usually happens? It runs up and hits all those stops, and it runs it to a new higher high. And uh, you can see that it kept going. It got a little resistance in here. So a good place to think about exiting was right before this high again. And you can see a lot of people were exiting and a lot of new shorts were trying to sneak in and get short there. But guess what? They're getting burned right now uh, because they wouldn't have got out of that with four ticks. And then that was it for the day for me. It's, it's lunchtime by that time. And you don't want to be entering uh, in here. You don't. Want, you might have considered going short here. Let's see if that one would have worked. Um, it's a pretty big bar, fairly big bar. You would have entered at 55 and a quarter. And guess what? It's a four tick failure. Um, 
you know when you saw that doji right there at the EMA and all and back at this former support that would have been a good place to say hey I'm gonna exit this without getting my four ticks I'll take my profit and if you did it would have been a good thing because look what's happening we're going higher now with the bias the bias is up so um, that's just not a really good setup bar there's too many overlapping bars here when you break out guess what happens it always snaps back just about and there it comes it comes right back and then it starts over so um, you know that's that's just not a it's not a very good setup there so and if this would have had a big stem if this bar would have looked more like that I would have probably been thinking yeah you might want to take that trade but again, another clue that this is a range day is look how we're on both sides of the EMA, especially right across here. It's really obvious. You can tell the trend was up until it broke below here. And this is when the trend kind of changed to a range for the, you know, the biggest part. This is when you, you know, following the EMA, you can tell we changed to a range. And look, we're on both sides of the EMA. And look how flat it is. It's straight across there. But look back here how straight up it is. Now look at it straight up. So we're trending. We're probably going to make a leg equal to this one. That would be my target if I were still trading. I would look at that leg right there. And I would think that this new leg is going to look. You might could measure from there. But I really think this is where the new trend started right here. So my target would be just shy of 1560. That's where I'm figuring we may get before the close. Um, we just have to see. Don't go trading on that. Just follow the price action. But if I had a target and I was long, that would be my where I would be looking for prices to possibly go. So, uh, and that was really about it for today. But this, I would classify most of this day as a trading range again with a bias to the upside, and um, and that's why you really have to pay attention. And let me sh and and this is interesting because let me show you this because what happened yesterday. If you remember, it looked very similar, but it fails and it trades out the low side. So, you know, and so you could just about take it to the bank that everybody, all, all the smart traders were thinking, yeah, the new guys are all going to be thinking it's going to fail and go lower. And guess what? They run it down there and run everybody out of the longs, push everybody into the short side, and guess what? Today it breaks out and goes the other way. I, I mean, you can you can take that to the bank because that's how it works. They try to fool you just as soon as you think you got it figured out. So I'm guessing some of you got fooled today. Uh, I'm guessing some of you will send me some emails and say, yep, you were right, Mac. I got fooled today. And uh, I exited all my longs, which nothing wrong with exiting your longs if you're – if you know when this starts happening because you don't want to give back all these profits because it could do what it did yesterday but the odds are that when it broke down here and reversed we were going back to that test the highs so um, that that's what you should have in and plus like I said my guess immediately was they're gonna fool everybody today it looks a lot like yesterday but they're gonna fool everybody today and we're gonna end up you know, with the upward bias going out the upside, and that's exactly what happened. So, you know, when you watch this every day and you get thousands of hours doing it, you'll, you know, you'll start to pick up on this stuff uh, because really what happens is you're, you've got selective memory when you haven't been doing this very long, and you really just remember what happened today and yesterday, and you're trying to forget the day before and the day before that because it probably wasn't very successful day, so you try to forget them real quick, but... You need to get to the point where you remember every day and you remember what happened, but at the same time, you remember the next day, they'll try to make it look the same way, but trick you. Um, and that's all this is. It, it, it's I tell people a lot of times, um, if you are a very analytical person and you've got a lot of common sense, especially good common business sense, and you're probably going to struggle with trading more than anybody because it goes strictly against common sense. Common sense tells you right in here, look at that. I need to be going long. And you jump in long, and guess what? As soon as you get long, it's rocketing off to the downside. And then common sense says, oh, you know, you watch it go down here, and it goes higher, and it turns down, and common sense says, oh, 
I need to get out of my long now and go short. And so you exit the long that you were already in at the wrong place, and you get short, and guess what? It immediately reverses and starts heading up. And it gets up back up here, and you're thinking, well, shoot, I was right the first time. I shouldn't have gone short. Now you reverse to the long side, and guess what? It turns down again, and you just you finally give up, and you were right all along. Look, it's going higher. They just You just have to understand how it works. The smart traders are buying down in here, and they're exiting in here. And... They're not, and you're doing just the opposite because common sense says you need to be doing the opposite. So I, I know how it works because I've been there and done that, and uh, you don't want to be doing that. So you've got to, you've got to find the intestinal fortitude to be able to buy when prices look like they're going lower, and sell when they look when you think they're going higher. Um, and you need to know all these rules because there's rules that we have set in place with price action that tell you all when to be expecting what. And uh, our rules tell us to be looking to buy down here every time and to sell up here almost every time unless, um, and, you, and you notice there's less sales up here, but that's because today the trend always takes precedence and we had a bias to the upside. So you had to be careful and you can see how they didn't take off as quickly when on the sales side as they did on the buy side. The buy was up, so everybody was looking for reasons to buy. And um, so hopefully that all makes sense to you. And the more you do this, the better you'll get at it. It doesn't happen overnight. Um, a lot of times it doesn't happen in a few weeks or a few months. And it might take you a year or two or a few years to figure this out. It took me a long, long time. Um, and it'll probably take you the same. So anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll come back and do it again tomorrow, and we'll see you then.